You already know about Kenneth Arnold's famous UFO sightings over Mount Rainier on June 24, 1947. And you probably also know that Lou Elizondo has just recently doubled down on what happened in Roswell 1947, there was a UAP that crashed. In fact, there were two UAP that crashed and uh, one flew away while the other one did not and it was recovered by the US government. But I'm guessing that you probably didn't know that the Kenneth Arnold sighting and the Roswell crash were just the bread on a UFO flap sandwich that changed the UFO conversation forever. At least that's according to the guy that ran the US government's UFO investigation office and then later wrote a book about it. No, not that guy. This guy. Edward J. Ruppelt, who was the director of Project Grudge and the first director of Project Blue Book. And in his book titled The Report on Unidentified Flying Objects, he details a series of UFO sightings that occurred from June 24, 1947 to July 5, 1947 that took place all over the continental United States including a report from an Air Force pilot that witnessed five or six circular objects flying in a formation off of his right wing. This incident took place four days after Kenneth Arnold's sighting on June 28 over Lake Mead, Nevada. A few hours later on that same day at 9.20 p.m., four Air Force officers, two pilots, and two intel officers saw a light travel over Maxwell Air Force Base. They stated that while they were watching the object travel, it began to zigzag and then it would have sudden outbursts of extreme speed and eventually took a 90 degree turn as it exited over the horizon. The infamous White Sands Proving Ground also chalked up its first UFO sighting during this same time frame. When several people reported seeing a pulsating light that traveled from horizon to horizon in about 30 seconds. Next, on July 4th, 1947, four disc-shaped objects were witnessed by several civilians as they streaked across the sky near Mount Jefferson in Oregon. Then, on July 5th, Mac Brazel found a field full of otherworldly debris located outside of the town of Corona, New Mexico. A few days later, the Roswell Daily Record confirmed and then quickly retracted the recovery of this disc, a disc which Lou Elizondo claims was then taken away and reverse-engineered. So was this two-week period the most impactful UFO flap in history? Only time will tell, but in the meantime, go ahead and get yourself familiar with Eminent by Lou Elizondo and the report on UFOs by his predecessor. Thank you guys for watching, and if you're interested, I just want to provide you with a quick update on my status because I know I've been absent more than usual for the last few months, but everything is fine on my side. I've just been promoted, so I've had to deal with a little bit more work time, but it's a good thing for my family and myself. Um, I also have two teenage kids, so the amount of running around I do after work is extraordinary. I don't know how parents with more than two kids handle it. But I just want to let you know that everything's been going fine. I have uh, done a presentation at the Cosmic Summit. And if you'd like to watch it, it's actually something that I'm, um, I'm proud of it because it's something that no one else has really put together yet. And it's related to all things time related in the UFO conversation, whether that's our perception of time, the distant history of the UFO phenomenon, or just uh, aspects and comments that have been made related to time like Michael P. Masters and some of the comments Lou Elizondo was made but head over to YouTube to the Cosmic Summit and check the video out I think you'll enjoy it thank you